For the Daily Radio News on 94.3 WKUF in Flint, I'm David Jackson for Tuesday, June 14, 2016. A city-funded investigation into the claims by former Flint Administrator Natasha Henderson found that the allegations against Mayor Karen Weaver were false. Henderson was controversially fired from her city administrator position in February and filed a federal lawsuit in May, claiming that Mayor Weaver was redirecting funds to her own account away from city donation pages. The city of Flint ordered an independent investigation into the claims last month, and in a press release from the mayor's office, Stacey Erwin Oaks, Flint's chief legal officer, and attorney Brendan Basiga, the independent investigator paid for by the city of Flint, concluded that the allegations of wrongdoing were untrue. The attorneys added that the checks that were allegedly deposited into Mayor Weaver's personal account were not deposited anywhere and were found in the city's finance department. According to Gary Ridley of the Flint Journal, Henderson's federal lawsuit continues despite findings by the city of Flint investigation. And Catherine Smith-Kennedy, attorney for Henderson, says that the former Flint administrator was terminated wrongfully and she looks forward to sharing the evidence that supports her story when she has her day in court. The state of Michigan released the most recent findings of lead testing in Flint's Sentinel sites, and test results show that lead levels are continuing to drop in area homes. According to the study, covering approximately 160 homes throughout Flint, around 94 percent of the homes tested at or below the federal limit of 15 parts per billion of lead contaminants in the water. One of the first phases of Mayor Weaver's Fast Start program was scheduled to replace lead pipes in 33 homes where high lead levels were originally detected. And of the homes with lead pipes replaced in the program, the report shows that all but one tested below the federal guidelines for lead contamination. In five rounds of testing since the Sentinel program began, there has been a gradual decline in lead content in the Flint water system. But according to Roberto Acosta of the Flint Journal, even residents who have had their water service lines replaced should continue to use water filters and continue to flush their faucets until further notice. The state-appointed Michigan Protection and Advocacy Service is suing two nursing care facilities in Fenton over potential neglect and abuse charges. Dominic Adams of the Flint Journal reports that the advocacy group learned of possible abuse and neglect at the Crestmont Nursing Care Center and Fenton Health Care, both in Fenton. The group allegedly made repeated requests for records relating to the alleged incidents of failure to properly treat sores and failure to administer proper drug treatments, but the homes declined to comment other than to say that the incidents are under internal investigation. In sports, the Detroit Tigers shot out to an early 7-0 lead last night by the top of the third. But from the bottom of the third through the fifth, the Chicago White Sox scored six unanswered runs of their own. In the bottom of the ninth, the Tigers led Chicago 9-7, but the White Sox capitalized on a Francisco Rodriguez wild pitch, eventually scoring two that sent the game into extra innings. In the bottom of the 12th, Anibal Sanchez allowed a double that after a sacrifice bunt put Chicago outfielder J.B. Shuck into scoring position, where with one out, Adam Eaton hit a walk-off grounder to center, completing Chicago's comeback from seven runs down to beat Detroit 10-9. The Tigers are back in Chicago tonight at 8-10 Eastern. In the NBA Finals, Game 5 saw Cleveland's LeBron James and Kyrie Irving both scoring 41 points to Golden State's Klay Thompson's 37 and Stephen Curry's 25 points in Cleveland's 112-97 win to stay alive and against the Golden State Warriors. Golden State still leads the series three games to two, and Game 6 is scheduled on Thursday for a 9 p.m. tip-off in Cleveland's Quicken Loans Arena. And finally, MIT's TechnologyReview.com wrote an analysis of what it would take to fulfill the campaign promises of the current presidential nominees who say that Apple should make the iPhone in the U.S. The short version, it would tack on roughly 10% to the cost of the latest iPhones. The longer version, on the other hand, points out that the phone contains two-thirds of the periodic table, including rare earth elements that are almost exclusively mined in China, and according to the article, that's just the logistics of mining raw materials. To make the mobile phone, Apple employs around 1.6 million people across 766 suppliers, half of which come from specialized manufacturing plants in China that are apparently set up to retool at a moment's notice to the latest manufacturing specs from Apple. In short, yes, the iPhone is a symbol of American ingenuity, but author David Abraham notes that the realities of global economy are more complex and inescapable than simply making a proclamation in a campaign speech. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.